This is the uh, the fourth in a four-part series uh, that I'm been calling no matter what uh, what is it that I understand about God no matter what no matter what occurs in my life if I can remember four basics I'm convinced that I will be able to embrace any impediment that I encounter and see it as a gift rather than a grief. If I, can, if I can grasp these essentials of the sacred, I think, I believe, my life will be full and there will be nothing that will overwhelm me. So once again, here are the, here are the basics as I understand them. The first one is, no matter what, God loves me. The second is, no matter what, God seeks me. The third, no matter what, God gives me another chance. And today's thought, no matter what, God works through me. So... So about the time that I understood that God was giving me another chance to be a part of life, soon after I understood how God sought me out because God loved me, not only in spite of my weaknesses, but because of my weaknesses. About that time, I finally began to grasp that perhaps I had a place in the larger notion of God's realm, God's kingdom, God's experience. About that time, it dawned on me that just as I needed God, I was needed by God. It's a reciprocal relationship. I've come to realize that, that I have not one but many gifts to offer, and no matter what, God works through me. Along the way, sometime in my faith journey, a door opened that, that introduced me to a richness of life that I previously thought was, was only an illusion. There's a story that comes from the archives of another church about a newly married couple on the first night of their honeymoon. After a ceremony involving just the right number of bridesmaids, groomsmen, a, a cute flower girl, and a, and a precocious ring bearer, after the appropriate vows were exchanged, all the formal pictures taken and, and congratulations received, after a rather long day of being with family and friends celebrating that momentous transition in their lives, the couple finally were escorted to their hotel's fancy and expensive bridal suite. As they walked into the suite in the early hours of the morning, they saw a sofa, a chair, and a table. But where was the bed? 
with some blurry-eyed searching, they discovered that the sofa was a hide bed uh, with a lumpy mattress and, and, and sagging springs. They were far too tired to try to find new accommodations at that moment, so they reluctantly went to bed. After spending a fitful night and, and waking up in the morning with aches and pains, you can imagine their temperament. Angry and frustrated, they'd spent precious money and time to stay in such an uncomfortable place that they decided to do something about it. The new husband stomped downstairs, went to the hotel desk, and in a rage gave the management a tongue lashing. Did you open the door in the room? Asked the clerk. The groom went back up to the room. He opened the door to what he thought was a closet. There, complete with fruit baskets and chocolates, was a beautiful large bedroom. There are those times when we approach life a lot like those newlyweds. Tired and frustrated, we, we, we get to a point when we when we think we've reached all that we're capable of, all that we have the ability to do, all that life offers. After doing things the best way we know how, and, and often exactly the way we were told to, <laughs> an impasse is reached, and we're disappointed. We're disappointed that we don't see more for our investment of time and energy. Some moments we may even get angry and, and lash out at God for the situation we find ourselves in. We look around and, and we see, well, we see the jobs that others have and we wonder, why not me? Why not us? We look at those who, who don't have to work extra jobs to pay the bills and we wonder, what would it be like to, to have time to ourselves? We see those who are creative or caring or athletic or popular and, and we wonder. We wonder what happened, <laughs> what happened to us along the way. We buy into an assumption that because we don't have the gifts that someone else has, in some way, we are less, less valuable, less useful, less loved. And so we stop looking for the potential in our own lives, in ourselves. We don't bother to, to open any more doors, assuming that they lead nowhere anyway. And the frustration builds. I happen to believe that life can be different I also happen to believe that's what Paul was writing about. Those in, in the church at Corinth were struggling with the frustration of comparison. They were so used to competing with and comparing themselves to others that, that they'd begun to lose sight of their own giftedness. They'd begun to lose sight of the ways that the sacred one was calling them to use their gifts. They'd begun to lose sight of their spiritual selves. And they were losing their ability to recognize their potential. Paul was writing to them to share a truth that could help them break out of the frustration of comparison. Paul was writing to them suggesting that they could break out of the bitterness of feeling like failures, suggesting that when they grasped the reality of who they were and who they were a part of, that they would understand they had gifts to share, and that no matter what, no matter what, God would use those gifts. God would work through them. Paul's words could have been written directly to us. You see, we're, we're all connected. Christianity describes it as being a part of the body of Christ. Because of that connection to the sacred one in each other, we are constantly being offered the chance to open new doors to explore new and greater gifts. 
Paul invites us to eagerly desire the greater gifts. Don't give up hope. Don't stop looking behind those closed doors because there is potential behind them. Yeah, I can hear those finely oiled cogs of doubt moving in your minds. Not me. Uh, God can't use my gifts. Wouldn't want to use my gifts. I've, I've messed up in life and, and I've messed up my life and I've messed up other lives too much as it is. I can hear what you're thinking because I too have thought those thoughts along the way. But no matter what, God can and does use the gifts that you bring to the table. Now, lest you think I'm just in another one of my uh, overly optimistic phases, uh, I want to share with you a, a few of the people whose gifts God has used. I might start with Abram. You can read about him in Genesis. That's one of the books in the Bible. Here was a guy that was, that was so weak that he was willing to pretend that his wife Sarai was his sister so that the Pharaoh would not kill him. God had intervened to keep the Pharaoh from adding Sarai to the Pharaoh's harem. And what did God eventually do with Abram? Changed his name to Abraham. And Sarai's name to Sarah. And used them as the beginning of the people Israel. I might then go to the book of Exodus to explore an extraordinary leader of the Israelites. He argued with God over his perceived lack of abilities. But God still used the one-time murderer, Moses to lead millions out of slavery and into freedom. And of course, the who's who of the faith also includes the, the rock-slinging David, who became king and, and then had another man killed so that he could sleep with the other man's wife. Uh, but God, God used David's gifts. And we experience some of those gifts through the Psalms. There's Elijah who ran away from God, and yet God brought him back and used his gifts. There's even an orphan, Esther, who became queen and saved all sorts of people's lives. Those are just a, a glimpse of the people in the Old Testament whose, whose gifts God used, no matter, no matter what their past was. And the list continues in, in the New Testament. Look at Jesus' interaction with tax collectors like Matthew and Zacchaeus. Look at the women who were disenfranchised like Mary Magdalene and the woman at the well. Witness the turnaround stories of the apostles Peter and Paul. The Bible is rife with stories of perceived less thans. Less thans becoming more, becoming whole, becoming integral parts of the body, of the whole. In each story of success coming out of failure, in each cry of I can't transforming to a praise of thanks saying I was able, in each no that became yes, there is the presence of the Holy One. As the Sufi poet Hafiz wrote, all the talents of God are within you. How could this be otherwise when your soul derived from his genes? I love that expression. All the talents of God are within you. Sometimes Hafiz can, cannot help but to applaud certain words that rise from my depths. No matter what, God works through those who open their hearts. No matter what, God uses your gifts. I invite you to stop for a moment to, to reflect upon those times when it seemed as if you had nothing to offer. Times when you or, or someone around you uh, counted yourself as worthless. Did the fear of inadequacy cause you to want to give up in exhausted frustration? 
I believe that's what Paul was writing about to the church at Corinth. They had begun to lose sight of who and whose they were. They'd started to stop opening doors. They'd stopped being mindful and had begun to settle for the mediocrity of mindlessness. Perhaps you're at that point of frustration right now. If so, I repeat what God, what Paul said. I repeat what Paul said. Eagerly desire the greater gift. The love of God is that greater gift. When you desire the sacred in the midst of the profane, you'll discover that, that God will use your gift to transform your failures into successes. As a, as a part of the body, as a part of the whole, God will use your gifts. And, and together, together we will journey just a bit closer toward a compassionate, spirit-filled life. So there you have it. Four basics from the faith that I am convinced, if we can grasp, will lead to a full life. The kind of life God intends for us. Four basics that if we can truly embrace will not only keep us from being overwhelmed, they will guide us in our search toward that full life. No matter what, God loves me. No matter what, God seeks me. No matter what, God gives me another chance. And no matter what, God works through me. And I know that if God does that for me, God also does that for you. Just a thought.